So now we're going to start off with our AMA portion of this uh, of the show with Team 6929 Data Force. To start off, could you tell us a little bit about your history in FTC and FIRST? Yeah, so our history in FIRST, um, most of our team members have done FLL before, and then this is the seventh year for Data Force, and um, we've progressed throughout the years, and now we have eight members on our team ranging from uh, ninth grade to 12th grade and we're a community team. So we're associated with six different schools. How many of the members you said ninth to 12th, how many of your members are seniors? Uh, just two. So uh, me, me and then, uh, Jacob and I remember on our team. Awesome. And how did you guys get started at first? Uh, well, like, um, I started in first in Nebraska. Um, about, I think oh, it was 10 years ago. Um, so I started with FLL and then, uh, progressed from there. Yeah. And, and then, what was the origin of your guys' name? Like where, where did, where did data force come from for you guys? Um, well, we really like star Wars. So, um, <laughs> we got the force name from there and then just data force, you know, it kind of just went together and it sounded really good. So that's where we got the name from. Yeah. Awesome. And I know like some of your robots names, what's your robot name this year? I know some of them in the past have been Star Wars related. Yeah. So our Velocity Vortex robot was Millennium Falcon. Um, I'm pretty sure the Robert Recovery robot was BB-8. And then I think this year we might name it Edswing. I don't know. We haven't really came up with a name yet. So we'll decide. Yeah. Cool. And then what sets your team apart from others in your opinion? One thing that sets our team apart from a lot of other teams is we try to like focus heavily on robot and also community outreach at the same time. So uh, you can see like in our region, we do many outreach events to connect with teams in different areas and connect with people that want to join first. So uh, we do a lot of outreach in that area. So one thing that sets us apart is we try to focus on both outreach and robot equally. And can you briefly explain your design process? I know many teams struggle with sticking through a plan throughout the whole season. What's your design process look like? Yeah, so our design process first starts out by like identifying the problem. So like most teams will identify the same problem where um, main problem in this game is picking up the stones and then uh, delivering them. And then we'll come up with our requirements to meet that problem. So our requirements will be first for the whole robot as a whole and then we'll split up the requirements from there for each mechanism. And based off of those, we'll be able to develop mechanisms that we want to put onto the robot. And then those requirements will translate into design ideas, which will be prototyped and then test it out. And then when we prototype and test, we keep a testing log. And then that way we're able to keep track of which requirements we've met and which requirements we have to uh, meet on the next test. And then after our uh, designs have met all our requirements and they become approved. So when they become approved, we CAD them. So then we know it fits between fits within the weight and then size. And then using the CAD, we're able to um, CNC and then 3D print any parts we need for the robot and then put them on there. And then we'll test a couple more times to make sure our final design works. So do you guys do like full CAD of your robot before going into your final assembly? Yeah, I would say definitely this year we catted the whole robot before like it was even built. Uh, primarily because um, I would say like eighty to ninety percent of the robot this year is like custom. So we uh, did a lot of like three D printing, uh, CNC, um, because we finally got our CNC working this year. We have a, a in house one that we got last year. And we couldn't quite get it to work, but this year we uh, experimented with with it some more and were able to do more parts on it. So that's good. So being a community team, what kind of budget do you guys have and how do you fundraise? Yeah, so our budget uh, is based off of our fundraising every year and we strive to make sure we have enough money uh, for any robot equipment and, uh, and costs that we have throughout the year. So in order to fundraise, we do it through our sponsorship package, which is in our business plan. And it pretty much like is something that we send out to potential sponsors so we can identify like, and we can tell them what the 
benefits are of joining our team and then uh, how they can benefit through it and how we benefit through them. And then we do demos to our sponsors and stuff. So uh, we have over like 10 sponsorships this year and yeah. Awesome. So, and what CAD software do you guys use? You talked a lot about CAD earlier. I just wanted to get that off. Yeah, we use SolidWorks to design our CAD and then um, we use some other softwares in order to translate that into G code for our CNC machine. So what would you guys say has been your biggest challenge this year, either if that's mechanical or programming or maybe one of both, just what do you guys think has been the hardest thing? Um, probably like the turret and like all the degrees of freedom that we have on our robot and incorporating that into like good programming too, because, uh, uh, like. I would say most of the robots like automated. So like we basically have to do nothing when driving, but we have to, um, you know, uh, make sure everything works well together and is as fast as possible too. Yeah. What are, what are some examples of those, like of driver controlled enhancements that you were talking about there? Yeah. So like, um, since we're not mechanum, since we're not a mechanum robot, um, we, um, when we drive back to the foundation, we can't strafe left and right. So what we do is we use the turret. Um, it's like three or four degrees of freedom. It's the, you know, the drive train, the turret, and then the horizontal lift and our twist servo. And then we pretty much follow like a set point with the joysticks. And then from there, um, it's able to um, um, translate all of those mechanisms to the specified point. So that's how we're able to get to our uh, set points really fast and uh, reliable too. And so that has been, we've been perfecting that, perfecting that algorithm over some time now and then, you know, getting it as good as possible. So you mentioned you guys aren't using Mechanum and, and I mean, if, if people who followed you guys noticed you almost never do, why is that? Why do you guys, I don't want to say you seem to avoid it, you know, <laughs> very intently but but what is what do you see as the advantage to your drivetrain strategy yeah one reason we don't do mechanism is uh consistency wise it helps us be more consistent during our autonomous and teleop periods uh through a six wheel drivetrain and also this year especially since there's a lot of robot to robot interaction through having a six wheel drivetrain it's easier to make sure you don't have defense played against you and you also could possibly play defense against other teams. Awesome. What part of your robot do you think is most unique? Yeah, the most unique part of our robot is pretty much like our turret because yeah. uh, we haven't seen many teams or any teams that have a turret design. And then uh, on our turret, all our mechanisms that work together in order to make sure that works efficiently uh, makes it pretty unique. Are there any aspects to your robot, like innovations or little things you found out that you're particularly proud of, like a challenge you saw in a, or you solved in a particularly what you believe to be a clever way? Uh, are there any of those you'd like to share? Um, probably like one clever thing that we figured out um, was being able to extend our horizontal lift out pretty fast. So we're able to do that through a linkage rather than a spool, mm -hmm. which some teams have on a servo. So through that, it extends out in like less than a second rather than multiple seconds. Awesome. On average, how much time does your team spend working on the robot or competition in general? Uh, I would say like we usually meet like around 30 hours per week. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's quite a bit, but... Um, Primarily, like before competitions, it gets a little bit higher, especially because we don't have the weekends to work on. So that because like um these past three weeks we've had three state competitions, and we haven't really had enough time to like work on the robot and like perfect it. Uh, so it's pretty much been like just tuning it up and getting it ready for the next competition. Cool. So for the for the past couple of years, you guys have done a, a really great job. What do you think is like one of the main reasons that you're consistent and really good every year? I think one of the main reasons is our design process helps us keep helps us stay on track and also 
another reason is just the time and effort that we put into it. So making sure that we have a solid robot before every competition and then uh, sticking to our design process through that time. All right. And we asked in the chat, how do you say mechanum? How do you guys say mechanum? Mechanum. Mechanum. That's how I say it. Mechanum. It's mechanum. <laughs> All right. Let's go to that Andy Mark giveaway we had, Tyler. I mean, speaking about mechanum, let's, you know, go to the people who pretty much brought it to the market everywhere, which is Andy Mark, and they pronounce it mechanum. Not Mechanum or whatever weird way that Mecha Muffin's asking us to say it uh, in chat. Uh, so once again, uh, we're giving away a set of four stones from our friends at Annie Mark. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.